Hi everybody, welcome to my review of Season 4, Episode 9 of Little Women Atlanta. If you have not seen this episode yet, this video will act like a spoiler, so you might want to watch this video later. The name of this episode is Road Trippin' Part 2. The episode begins with everyone still in Tennessee and on the fishing trip, and Abira is telling Minnie to try on the extra pair of waders. Then Amanda stands up for Minnie and tells Abira that no one is afraid of her just because she's a hood. Abira says that they should tape the waders together and have Minnie try them on. Then after she said that, Miss Juicy is just in her seat rolling around laughing hard. And then Juicy separates Abira from everybody and they take a walk. Minnie asks the twins if they can believe that Abira was talking about her weight. Money says that everything was fine and things just blew up. And when one person in the group gets mad about something, everyone in the group gets mad. Andrea says that she was standing up for her sister when she jumped into the argument. Juicy, Sam, Tanya, Devon, Tahiri, and Abira are on the shuttle, also talking about what just happened. Back outside, one of the twins are discussing how she jumped into the argument and stood up for her sister. Andrea says that Money doesn't know how it feels to be a twin, and then Money says that she knows how it feels to have a sibling, and after her mother died, she and her brother became closer. Andrea says that she wasn't talking about her mother, mother. Then Money gets up and just walks away. And she says that she does not play when it comes to her mom. Money says when her mother passed, she and her brother just had each other and it made them closer. And she understood when Andrea was standing up for her sister in the argument. Then Money walks into the shuttle. Then she tells everyone in the shuttle what happened. Back outside, the twins, their boyfriends, and Minnie decide to ride on a separate shuttle. Back on the other shuttle, Money is still talking about what just happened. Sam begins to get emotional because she's trying so hard not to pop off. Chris tells Andrea that she shouldn't have said what she said about Money's mother, and the woman is dead and can't speak for herself. Tanya and the other ladies comfort Money, who is now crying. Next, the shuttles head back to everyone's rooms. Moreland and Money stay behind because Money is still upset about what Andrea said about her mother. Then, Amanda and Andrea approach Money, and Andrea, who is now crying, apologizes for Money for what she says and says that she didn't mean it. She says that when she gets mad, she can say some messed up things. What she said was messed up, and even Chris is mad at her for what she said. Money begins to get emotional and hugs the twins. Andrea says that she needs to think before she speaks. In the commentary, Money says that she's glad that Amanda and Andrea apologized, and it means a lot to her. She understands that people say things that they don't mean sometimes, and she wouldn't have put it behind her. Money tells the twins that they are good, and she just wants to be able to enjoy the trip. The twins and Money share a hug again. That was really messed up of what Andrea said about Money's mother. But it's good that she apologized, and you know, she really should think before she speaks, because that really hit home for Money. That really hit home. Next, Minnie and Sam have a chat. Minnie says on the fishing trip, she wasn't expecting to raise her voice or start any drama. And she says that what Abira said hurt her. Sam says that she felt like Abira pushed things a little too much, and she didn't have to say those mean words. Sam says that Abira was being extra. Then, Jordan walks into the room and asks Minnie why she started the drama. He says that he doesn't want any more drama because proposing to Amanda is a very important part of his life. Sam says that they promised to keep things together. Minnie says that she loves Amanda and Jordan, and she wants them to have the best engagement ever. Jordan asks Sam and Minnie if proposing to Amanda by the waterfall is a good idea, and he asks them if he should throw down some rose petals. Sam says that Jordan should express to Amanda how much he loves her. Sam says Jordan should express to Amanda how much he loves her with words and not to be afraid to cry. Next, all of the ladies and their dates go out for dinner. Chris makes a toast to Jordan and Amanda for putting the trip together for everyone. Then Abira starts coughing. Amanda says that when Chris made the toast, Abira would cough. Then Abira says that she was just choking on her drink and asks Amanda if she wants to jump down her throat. Amanda says, yes. You know, I just find this funny. The, these producers are really trying hard to add some extra drama to the show. Like, Abira was obviously, like, coughing for real, like, she was really coughing, not no, eh, eh, no, no, no fake coughing. And I also found it funny how in the commentary, Andrea was like, what's this coughing about? Juicy asks Abira if she got choked up during Chris's toast. Abira says no, and she thinks that her wine went down the wrong way. 
Minnie thanks Jordan for inviting everyone on the trip, and she says she enjoyed herself. And she apologizes for getting out of character and causing drama. Jordan says that he wants everybody to get along. Abira tells Jordan that she apologizes for getting out of character too. She says that growing up she got bullied and had people coming at her. And that day she felt like she was attacked by more than one person over something that she had no control over. And it's not that she wants to get into a conflict or make someone feel uncomfortable. Abira says that she apologizes to everyone at the table if she made them feel uncomfortable by the way she acted. But at the end of the day, if she stands up for nothing, she will fall for anything. In the commentary, Minnie says that they were all bullied for being little. But that doesn't excuse Abira for what she did. Abira thanks Amanda and Jordan for inviting her on the trip. She begins to get a little emotional. She says that she went on that trip to fit in. She said the wrong thing and she's trying to fix that. Abira says that owning up to what you say is growth. In the commentary, Tanya says that she's known Abira for a long time and she knows that she's a good person and she just showed it by what she said. Then, Minnie gets up and excuses herself from the table early. Wow. Instead of indirectly saying all that mess, Abira should have been apologizing to Minnie. And of course, everyone else, just in case if she made them feel uncomfortable. And she's the main one who's been talking about addressing the elephant in the room. But I do agree, she really is showing some growth. And about Minnie leaving the table, even though it looks kind of rude, I think she did the right thing by leaving the table and not starting an argument with Abira for the sake of Jordan and Amanda. And for the sake of everyone else just trying to enjoy the trip. The next day, the ladies are optimistic about a fun day of shopping and dancing. In the commentary, Minnie says that she had a good night's sleep and is ready for the day. Money, Abira, and Juicy have a conversation about what was said at the dinner. The twins and Minnie are also talking about the situation elsewhere. Minnie says that Abira mentioned being bullied, but she was the one who started drama, and she's already self-conscious about her weight. Abira tells Juicy and Money that she doesn't understand why after that heartfelt speech of hers, Minnie got up and left the table. Money says Minnie was probably feeling a certain way because of what happened back at the lake. Abira says that it was obvious that Minnie couldn't fit the pair of waders that she had on because it takes 10 of her to fit in a suit that she had on. No, Abira, just, just stop exaggerating. Minnie is not that big. And I am sure that Minnie would have been able to fit those waders. What you just said was wrong and what you did back at the lake was wrong. Minnie tells the twins that Abira talking about her weight wasn't the only thing that she hit below the belt. She also questioned Abira's sexuality by calling her a man. Andrea says that Minnie also called Abira the B-word, and she did all of that because Abira was talking about her weight. Amanda says that Minnie can't take back what she said, and she can only apologize, and hopefully they hear each other out. Abira says that she will try to have a conversation with Minnie. Next... The ladies and their dates go shopping for cowboy boots and hats so they can go line dancing. While the other ladies are trying on their boots and frolicking, Minnie is having a hard time to have fun because of what happened with Abira. Minnie pulls Abira aside to talk. She apologizes for what she said the day before and for questioning her sexuality. She says that she's been trying to change and use her words carefully. And the reason why she lashed out like that is because of the way she came at her about her weight. She brings up how a couple of weeks before, she went to urgent care because she thought she had a cold, but found out that she actually had fluid around her heart. She says that's why her feet and face swell, and that's why she's bloated. Minnie gets emotional. Mi Abira says she can see how strong Minnie is. They don't know each other's stories, and that's why they're having that moment to know why they would come each other. She thinks that they both have things that they're hiding, and they don't want to be vulnerable. She gets that weight is a sensitive subject, but she didn't know what Minnie was going through. Abira says when someone calls her the B-word, it takes her off, because coming up, she had to fight for respect as a woman and a little woman. She says if Minnie had communicated in the first place, the ball wouldn't have kept rolling. Minnie says that she wants to move forward. Abira says that she thinks that they can move forward, and as little women, they need to unite. Abira says that they can start fresh. Minnie and Bira shake on it. Like I said in my last video, you should not talk about people unless you know their story. But... This scene was a definite tearjerker, you know, really was, but it's good that they sat down and talked, and it's good that they are starting fresh. The ladies and their dates go to a bar and grill restaurant. Everyone goes line dancing and has a good time. Tanya and Sam get on stage and sing. Minnie tells Amanda that she and Abira made up. Then, a man approaches Abira, Money, and Andrea asking them to dance. All three of them turn him down. And then after this happens, Chris gets mad and then he just walks away. 
In the commentary, Andrea says that Chris always gets mad at her when other men approach her. Money asks Andrea if she's going to go talk to Chris. Andrea says she's not going to chase after him. Moreland talks to Chris. Moreland tells Chris if he needs to talk to him, he can. Chris tells Moreland that he's not trying to chase Andrea and play games. He says everyone can blame him for being the hole he was back in the day, and now he's trying to change and he doesn't know what he's doing wrong. Abira tells Andrea that men can get jealous, especially in new places. She says the health of herself and her unborn baby is important. Moreland tells Chris that he should have a talk with Andrea after everything settles down. After Moreland talks to Chris, Chris feels better. Then Chris buys all of the ladies a rose as a way to apologize for the way he acted. Chris has his nerve for getting mad for some man just asking his girlfriend to dance. This dude done cheated on Andrea, had a whole kid with another woman. We only know of just one kid, you know. Now he knows how she felt when he would go and be with his other baby mama back in Texas. And Andrea wasn't even entertaining the man. At all. Something else. Let's move on. In the next scene, Sam and Minnie are playing badminton. Jordan tells them that he is ready to propose to Amanda and they need to get ready and hurry. He tells them to go to town and get him some rose petals for his proposal to Amanda. Sam tells Jordan that he's got this. Next, Andrea has a talk with Chris to talk about what happened the night before. Andrea tells Chris if he's going to get up and leave, he should do it because she has chased after him so many times. She didn't want him to explode, so she didn't follow him. She says she's not going to go back and forth because she's about to have another baby and she doesn't want her kids to always see them fighting. Chris says that he's going to walk out of there so there won't be any more drama. Andrea brings up how he gave all of the ladies roses. Chris says he bought all the ladies a rose as a way to apologize for walking out on everyone. He says that he and Andrea need to use some of the tools that they learned at the couples retreat that they went to. In the commentary, Andrea says that Chris is right for what he did, and if he didn't walk out, the fight would have gotten bigger. Chris says that they may fight, but they learn from those moments, and he still loves Andrea. The two share a kiss. In the final scene of the episode, all of the ladies and their dates go on a hike. In the commentary, Minnie says that she's nervous about Jordan's proposal to Amanda. After doing some hiking, they make it to the waterfall. In the commentary, Sam says that she is so nervous and hopes that everything goes as planned and Amanda doesn't notice what's going on. She and Minnie mention to the other girls that Jordan had a surprise, but they don't know exactly what it is. Then, Jordan and Amanda take their own separate paths near the bottom of the waterfall. All of the ladies stand on top of the bridge near the waterfall. Then, they release a banner that says, Will you marry me? And they throw rose petals. Jordan gets on one knee and opens up the box with the ring for Amanda. Amanda starts to cry. He asks Amanda, will she marry him? Amanda says yes while sobbing. Jordan puts the ring on Amanda's finger. The two share a hug and a kiss. Then Amanda shows everyone her ring. All the ladies show Amanda some love and cheer for her. Then Minnie tells Amanda that she and Sam were in on Jordan's plans. She says that she also helped Jordan pick out the ring. In the commentary, Andrea says that she's happy for her sister, but feels some type of way because she wasn't there for the ring shopping. She feels like Minnie should have told her the secret. Andrea asks why Jordan didn't tell her that he was going to propose to her. Amanda says Jordan didn't tell her because he knew she was going to tell her. Amanda asks Andrea if she's upset. And that's the end of the episode. Wow, Jordan and Amanda are engaged. Congratulations to them, man. Amanda is so lucky to have a nice man like Jordan in her life, and she is right. He would make a great father someday. So looks like the trip is wrapping up. Looks like everybody had a great time, you know, despite all that drama. I think it's great that Minnie and Abira are starting fresh. Of course, I still think Abira was wrong for what she said before, not knowing what Minnie was going through. I, I know I just said this in the last video, but you know, it's coming back up, you know? It's coming back up, you know? I don't have anything else to say about this episode, so I'm going to tell you guys what's going to happen next time. Next time on Little Women Atlanta, the ladies go to a vineyard and smash grapes that will be put into wine. Andrea is still feeling left out for not having anything to do with Jordan's proposal to Amanda. Minnie goes on the 85 South podcast and tells them that she was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. Minnie says that she had an appointment with her cardiologist and tells her mother that she might end up back in the hospital. 
Tanya talks to Devon about the future of their relationship. I don't get it how on these little women shows when one person gets engaged in the group then another one's thinking oh I want to be engaged too you know like um little women Dallas remember when Kaylee got engaged and then Tiffany is all talking to her boyfriend talking about how she want to be engaged she had the chance to be engaged but you decided to turn it down because you felt like you two were too young now Tanya's I'll talk about how she wants to be engaged you know I saw on the sneak peek for next episode she was talking about how she and Devon have been through the best and through the worst and they've been together for like almost the same amount of time that Jordan and Amanda have been together so we'll see what happens thank you guys so much for watching this video give this video a thumbs up if you liked it follow me on Twitter at ILU more than this follow me on Instagram at Taurus underscore charm subscribe to my channel if you have subscribed turn on my notifications Please help me reach 1,000 subscribers and 5,000 total viewing hours so I can continue to be eligible for monetization on my channel. You know, they're changing the rules for monetization starting sometime this month. I won't be able to get paid for making videos anymore. Like, I'm not making any serious money off of these videos, but I do plan to make an income off of YouTube someday. I have big plans for this channel, but I won't be able to make a profit off of them with this rule unless I get enough subscribers and viewing hours so please subscribe check out my other videos share my videos on other social media platforms tell your friends to watch me and I will see you guys next time bye